Images like these are becoming more common as rainfall intensity and frequency continue to rise. This past July, Eastern Kentucky, my home state, experienced devastating floods. This was particularly concerning to me because my brother and his family live in the impacted area. Luckily, they were okay, but 40 people died, and infrastructure is going to take years to recover. What can we do to make communities like these more resilient? And the answer is to provide quality data for decision support. The gold standard of quality data is FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, risk map data. And that a project from start to finish takes on average four to five years to complete. Not only do these projects take a long time, but many of the studied miles are no longer valid due to changes in land use, topography, or hydrology. Additionally, these miles are also unmapped, about 1.3 million miles, or about one-third of the available mileages in the United States. The Digital Solutions team at Stantec has created two products to help hasten delivery of quality flood data. The first is Flood Manager, which utilizes the cloud to post-process traditional modeling. And the second is Flood Predictor, which utilizes machine learning applied to traditional modeling to produce flood extents and probability at a rapid rate. Both of these products are available on Microsoft Azure Marketplace. We'll start with Flood Manager. So as we're moving towards the flood risk initiative, um, 2D modeling is becoming more and more apparent. 2D modeling provides more, greater level of detail within the floodplain as opposed to 1D modeling, but it also takes much longer to run. So a 1D model might be run in minutes, where a 2D model can take hours and even days. Additionally, the same is true with 1D, 1D unsteady and multi-plan models. These types of models are going to have the maximum benefit from Flood Manager because they take the longest to run. So when we're talking about time savings, we're also talking about cost savings, reduced project delivery time, and then secondary benefits include data management, consistent quality control. There's a 2D um, quality report that's available within Flood Manager, and then we're saving our clients on IT costs as well. So Flood Manager is a web-based application. It's not a software that you have to download. So anyone with a login can access it. And then users are assigned to projects. So a project team has access to the same latest and greatest model runs. And it's not a product that you have to babysit. This gives modelers more time to focus on engineering and quality. And then they get an email when the run is complete. So it's difficult to really quantify how fast Flood Manager is because every model is different. But essentially, um, in the time it takes to run one plan on an individual workstation, you can run an infinite number of plans within Flood Manager because these are run in parallel. So we took a real example of a model and ran it on an individual workstation, and it took about four days. And then Flood Manager, less than eight hours. So you can imagine on a watershed level of all the studies what kind of time saving that would be. And we think that the pricing is really reasonable for that time savings at $100 per plan run, or to have unlimited access, $10,000 a month. We've implemented this for our client, Iowa Department of Natural Resources. They had just started to embark on this 2D modeling initiative, and we serve as the program manager as Stantec, and they use multiple contractors to perform the modeling. They were really concerned not only about processing these large data sets, but how to share it among the teams for peer review. Flood Manager really helped accomplish that, that goal, and not only were they able to easily share data, but they were also able to cater the folder structure to suit their needs. So Flood Manager is related to Flood Predictor in that it helps build the data pool that Flood Predictor can use to train or learn from with the machine learning model. So on to Flood Predictor. So we can do flood predictions for both 
pluvial and fluvial events. We can do this for real-time events if we have forecast data. This can be used for mitigation, resilience, emergency management, disaster response. And then if we utilize future conditions, hydrology, and land use data, we can make climate change predictions as well. And I just want to point out that we are not trying to replace traditional modeling. But this can serve as best available data, especially for those areas that are unmapped, are no longer valid, or due to that four to five, time, four to five year time frame, have unlimited budget, schedule, or data. So if you think back to that image of the United States, that 1.3 million miles that are unmapped, if we were to apply traditional study methods just for the, the hydrology and hydraulics analysis, it would take 10 years. Flood predictor, we could do that in a year. If we were to narrow that scale to a typical study area or a hydrologic unit code 8, about 1,600 square miles, Traditional methods would take 9 to 12 months, and within flood predictor, we can do that in a day. And I know what you're thinking, that sounds really great, maybe a little bit too good to be true, and that's what I thought when I first heard about flood predictor. And as a former modeler myself, I really wanted to know what exactly the inputs that are going into the machine learning model. And they are very much the same as traditional modeling. So we're starting with topographic data, land use data, and then hydrology, whether it be for, um, for flash flooding or for riverine. From these core data sets, then we can derive additional inputs. So Manning's, slope, topographic wetness index, accumulation, and then we take it a step further and utilize these data deriv derivatives to create dimensionless indices. And for the first example, that hydraulic index one, that is rearranged to become flow over flow capacity or dimensionless. And that's really important because once it's dimensionless, then it can be applied to a wide flat terrain, steep terrain um, in the United States, Puerto Rico, Pakistan, it really doesn't matter. You're still getting that same quality of result. So we can train the machine learning model, let's say, in an area in New York, and then apply it to an untrained area, like, for example, in Kentucky. And that's what we're showing here. On the left, you have an image of the FEMA preliminary floodplains. In the middle is the flood predictor output, and then the probability of flooding there on the right. And overall, throughout our testing plan, we're seeing about an 85 to 95% correlation back to the traditional modeling. We can also do this for real events. So again, we had another catastrophic event in Waverly, Tennessee, where 20 people passed away. And we were able to use that rainfall data, apply it to flood predictor, and then correlate it back to the aerial imagery from that event. So you can see that the areas in dark red or high probability are inundated, and then those areas of low probability were not impacted. And the pricing is very comparable to traditional modeling. But once we've set up that initial model run, subsequent model runs are about half the cost. So we have a client, Tennessee Economic and Community Development, and similar to the areas of Eastern Kentucky and Waverly, Tennessee, they had areas in Western Tennessee that were no longer valid, had areas that were unmapped, and wanted um, to have results from flood predictor. So we took those results and implemented it into their portal that's called 10 Plan. This is available to community officials, so emergency managers, planners, and they can use this tool for mitigation and resilience support. So now they have access um, to review on their own time the predictions for a common storm, such as a two-year event, up to your more extreme event, such as a 500-year event. So they're able to look and see those um, areas that would be impacted, such as homes, critical facilities, and roadways. So you can imagine what a tool like this might have done for an Eastern Kentucky. 
and we believe that it would really help to save lives, which is our ultimate goal. This is an image of the United States of the last 10 years of flood-related fatalities. And we really feel that our products, Flood Manager and Flood Predictor, by delivering quality data at a rapid rate, can help have a significant impact on saving lives for our families, for our communities, not only in the United States, but globally as well. And I just want to quickly acknowledge the digital solutions team, in particular, Mark Bartlett, um, our data science lead as well. And with that, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you.